so my name is Leandra Neffin. I'm a an enrolled member of the Omaha tribe of Nebraska and Iowa. Um, I am a Thunder Clan woman, and I belong to the Sky People. Um, but I'm currently living here in the United Kingdom, which uh, I've been living here now for the last 13 years. Um, and I founded a group of natives who are living and working and living over here in the United Kingdom. So we are involved with the campaign against um, eliminating native themed mascot branding and imagery, um, which was being used at the Exeter Chiefs Rugby Club. And uh, can you explain a little bit about what that rug rugby club is and how the logo is used and now they're totally changing and rebranding, but they're keeping that their name, is that correct? Yeah, so I, so what happened basically, just to give a little bit of context, was a couple of years ago, I was approached by the Exeter Chiefs for Change campaign. Uh, this was a campaign that was actually made up of fans of Exeter Chiefs. Um, so Exeter Chiefs Rugby Club is actually located in the south of England. Um, I live in the Midlands, so it was something that was a little bit on my radar in terms of the uh, mascot, the branding, the imagery, and the logo. Um, but they approached me uh, and asked if I would uh, be a part of this campaign that they were running to eliminate the branding because they as fans were feeling uncomfortable with this. So um, I took it back to our group of UK uh, natives or natives who are living here in the UK and um, Tony Perry and Stephanie Land, they were a couple of people who joined us along with a, a few other members. We actually got support from a, a few uh, natives living in the United States as well. Um, and we started to kind of campaign through various media outlets. Um, and last year, I believe it was that they made the decision to get rid of the mascot, which was a, a the big chief mascot, which was a kind of a caricature cartoon figure dressed in a war bonnet uh, doing the tomahawk chop. And the fans would wear war bonnets, these kind of fake brightly colored um, feather headdresses, um, banging a drum, doing the tomahawk chop chant. Um, and so it's all very stereotypical type imagery. So Last year, they decided, you know, okay, we'll get rid of the mascot, but we've consulted a few people and found that the rest of it is highly respectful and we're doing it to honor you. So <laughs> that's where we kind of started to campaign even harder um, and, you know, held discussions with investors and people behind the scenes. Um, and we eventually were able to garner the support of National Congress of American Indians. Uh, we were doing media um, interviews to kind of highlight this issue. And it was really providing an opportunity to even educate on the relationships between Britain and in the indigenous peoples or indigenous populations in North America. Um, but at the same time, there was this kind of underbelly where a lot of people really did believe they were doing this to, to, to honor us. Um, and it kind of highlighted that, I guess, colonial predatory mentality in terms of um, them deciding what was honorable to us. Um, so we continued to campaign really hard. And um, yeah, leading up short to, I guess, a long story short, where we are now, where we have successfully um, gotten, to, gotten an agreement to rebrand. Um, and the whole time we were kind of advocating for them to really look at their own ancestry, you know, that they had actually this rich history um, of Celtic chiefs who were um, a part of their ancestry, their genetic makeup that they could actually be celebrating and using as an opportunity to highlight in schools, to educate the people of Devon um, and Exeter around their own ancestry without having to co-opt uh, a tribe or uh, a people who had no connection to Exeter Chiefs Rugby Club. And so, yeah, long story short, we've got a successful rebrand, um, a change in logo and a celebration of their own history and ancestry. And Rhonda, Rhonda Lovaldo, you follow a lot of the movements here for change the name, dropping logos. And there's still a lot of teams here in the United States that are keeping not only names, but images um, and keeping the branding and the same similar story. So what does it mean for 
you know, another country, a team in another country to take that step and drop the logo. I think it's wonderful and I commend you guys for really pushing hard on this. When I saw the announcement, I was like so happy for you all. Um, yeah. And the fact that other countries are realizing that, you know, that we need to step it up here, you know, in Kansas City, you know, we, we are going to be out there at the game this Sunday, uh, trying to, again, raise awareness of how offensive their native imagery, the tomahawk chop is uh, to native people. And the fact that this game is broadcast all over the world, perpetuating these stereotypes of native people is um, just horrible. And I, I hope more people realize that, you know, there is a group of native people in Kansas City that is advocating against that and that we will be out there um, making sure our voices are heard. And listening to some of the stuff that was going on in England, how does that correlate with here in the United States, Rhonda? Again, it's the, the whole uh, stereotypical uh, imagery that is being used and unfortunately the chop as well. And, you know, that's all people understand of native people. Unfortunately, there are 500 plus different tribes, tribal nations here in the United States. We are all not monolithic. Uh, we're all different. And the fact that that's gone all over the world and that's how people um, understand native people is just wrong. And can you expand on that there in England and I'm sure other countries, how did that get there with the imagery and the tomahawk chop and um, those sorts of things? Are they following what they see on American television, American sports teams? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah with, Go ahead. Of course. Yeah. With, with um, media, uh, mass communication, with film, um, those old John Wayne movies, you know, you see the teepees in, in um, Navajo land and it's like, that's not, that's not how it is. And um, unfortunately, those stereotypes have crossed over into different countries and that's what they, how they see us as. Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, I just echo that. Absolutely. It's, it's media portrayals, you know, um, this kind of relative invisibility, you know, in terms of um, I guess even here in, in, in England, I think because of proximity, you know, there, there's almost this kind of belief that um, because we, we, may, we don't exist is basically a lot of people have never come across a Native American. And so um, it, it was almost kind of shocking to them that they would be held accountable. You know, why would a Native American um, people in America or North America be upset by this? You know, almost as if the waters that connected, uh, separated us somehow did not keep them accountable for their actions. And so I see this even throughout Europe that that because there isn't an understanding, they don't have a real life contemporary context. They kind of basically base all of, all of their understanding, their education of native peoples on what they see on TV or the cartoons that they watched growing up. And so it becomes this really kind of romanticized, fetishized image, um, you know, this kind of noble savage versus the ignoble savage, you know, and it just gets really kind of deep into you know, the, the deeper issues around that predatory mentality. And are there other sports teams um, that have Native American themed names, logos? In, in, in um, yeah, uh, yeah, there is um, actually more recently, we've come across, a, 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 I think they're an ice hockey team who at one time the, the women's team was known as the derogatory slaw, uh, slur of, of squaw. Um, and and they, I think they've now changed that, but they still have their logo on the men's team called uh, the Warriors, I think. They're based out of Newcastle. Um, and it's, it's kind of something that we're looking into um, behind the scenes. Um, but generally, uh, what we're seeing mainly over here is the kind of, um, you know, the, the stereotypical imagery um, of, of natives wearing a headdress, um, you know, wearing buckskin um, and living in teepees. And they kind of homogenize us into this one stereotype of a Plains Indian or Plains Native. And so it's, it's not so much, you know, that it's prevalent in the sports teams, but 
as you get further out into Europe, you're seeing more and more of that, you know, in terms of their sports. There was another um, one that uh, Tony Perry actually, I think it was based in Iceland somewhere, or I could be wrong with that. So don't quote me on it. But yeah, there are a, a number of teams throughout Europe that we're kind of looking at behind the scenes. And here in the U.S., there's a lot of pushback and that same sort of we're doing this in honor of Native people. Is that was there a lot of pushback for the change with this logo for the rugby team? Yeah, absolutely. I think every single one of us was really kind of taken aback by the amount of racism that came out, um, the amount of abuse that we received on Twitter and social media. Um, and really just the kind of cognitive dissonance that was happening in terms of, you know, this new information we're presenting, but they're, they were holding so tightly to these, you know, rigidly held beliefs of us kind of putting us in this one dimensional box. Um, and I think that was kind of a surprise for all of us that this was actually a willful choice because once we'd done all the education work and provided all of the resources, there were still a lot of people who were holding quite rigidly to these um, stereotypes, you know, even linking it back to the psychological research and how this is impacting our youth um, and our communities. Um, yeah, I think that was one of the things that actually really surprised us. And I think at, uh, at the same time though, despite that adversity, we were all kind of in it for the long haul. Um, and we were in it to, you know, this basically cemented in our minds how much this needed to change and it needs to change quickly. And Rhonda, can you add to that the racism, the pushback that changed the name movements, you know, even just individuals, people who are out there, um, it's not just online, it's in person at these games. Yeah, definitely um, <laughs> a lot of uh, things that are said to us, uh, you know, people calling us, uh, you know, at, at our work, you know, I'm not hard to find, um, you know, I don't have a fake name on Twitter and, and people can find me at my actual physical job and as well as the Kansas City Indian Center, you won't believe some of the messages people leave on their answering machine. It is completely disrespectful and how, um, how rude they are to, you know, our brothers and sisters that, you know, are just trying to take care of one another. And, um, you know, Kansas City Center, Indian Center, they, they help us. They partnered with our group, the Not In Our Honor group and um, putting up billboards all over uh, the city and people see that. And so they're attacking them as well. And it's, it's, just, it's just terrible. So what is next for, I guess, the change the name movement there, um, not only where you're at, but across Europe? Well, <laughs> next steps, I think, are probably at the moment to take a, a, a rest um, because this has just been ongoing, um, you know, an onslaught of abuse of, you know, pushing back and, and fighting for the elimination of the branding imagery and logo and it even goes on beyond that like the, the the park sandy park actually has bars that were called the wigwam bar or the apache bar you know and when we think about how damaging that was you know even for me you know i i grew up um on the omaha indian reservation and you know kind of making those connections to a lot of the issues that we face as natives because of these stereotypes you know that, that this this work is hard work you know it's not easy and you can really you know make yourself vulnerable to some of that abuse you know that you, you experience and that pushback so next steps are going to be self-care rest take a bit of a break celebrate um the the change that's happened um but yeah looking to kind of implement um you know other campaigns that might be coming up throughout europe along with um changing and altering the language in the um you know the online racism bill that is over here it, there's not a provision for native americans i think because we do represent such a small minority um and so kind of looking even at um, you know, changes in legislation 